orthodontic arch wires a successful orthodontic therapy depends not only on manual skills and knowledge of treatment steps but also on knowledge and choice of materials used one of the major components of fixed orthodontic therapy is the choice of wires orthodontic wires are defined as devices comprising a wire conforming to the alveolar or dental arch which is used as an anchorage for correcting irregularities in the position of teeth as given by the encyclopedia and dictionary of medicine nursing and allied health 2003 orthodontic arch wires are active components of fixed appliances and bring about tooth movement via brackets and buckle tubes so in this image these are the arch wires which pass through the brackets and buckle tubes present on the facial surface of the teeth and are attached to all the teeth in the arch bringing about tooth movement Now let's take a look at a history of orthodontic wires how they have evolved through the years In 1887 the father of orthodontics Edward Angle tried replacing noble metals with german silver new silver Subsequently as he kept experimenting with different materials such as copper nickel and zinc alloys his favorite material became 1418 karat gold Until the early 1930s, dipole gold alloys comprised the most widely used material for wire manufacturing. Gold alloys are not used in routine orthodontic therapy anymore because they are expensive and not aesthetic. However, at times when patients are allergic to other metals, the use of gold is considered owing to its biocompatibility. In late 1930, stainless steel was introduced for appliance fabrication. By 1950s, stainless steel alloy was used by most of the orthodontists in 1940s beg with wilcock introduced australian stainless steel by 1960s gold was universally abandoned in favor of stainless steel in 1950s cobalt chrome alloys drawn into wires became available for use in orthodontic appliances marketed as lg alloy they were softer and more formidable in 1962 william and buller invented nitinol at naval ordnance laboratory maryland Anderson George F et al introduced nitinol in orthodontics in 1971 through University of Iowa. Unitec company licensed the patent in 1974 under the name nitinol that's the abbreviation for it. In 1970s titanium alloys were introduced as orthodontic wire materials. Beta titanium alloys were developed around 1980 by Charles J Burstone and John Goldberg and marketed as TMA that is titanium molybdenum alloy. In 1994, Dr. Rohit Sachdev invented copper-nickel titanium to orthodontics, which exhibits the special feature of phase transition at temperatures 15, 27, 35, and 40 degrees centigrade. In 2000, titanium niobium was introduced by Dalstra et al. used for tooth-to-tooth -tooth finishing. Recent advancement is the introduction of new materials like composites and fiber optics. Optiflex is a non-metallic orthodontic arch wire. It was designed by Dr. Talas in the year 1992 and manufactured by Armco. It is made of clear optical fiber and has got unique mechanical properties with a highly aesthetic appearance. Moving on to the classification of orthodontic wires. So, the orthodontic wires can be classified based on material and based on cross section. We already discussed about the orthodontic wires based on material. which are gold and gold alloys stainless steel nickel titanium alloys beta titanium cobalt chrome and nickel alloys and optiflex arch wires classification of orthodontic wires based on cross section so they can be either round square rectangle or multi stranded round wires are used for the initial and intermediate stages of treatment to correct crowding level the arch or close spaces In the final stages of treatment in order to position the crown and root in the correct maxillary and mandibular relationship we use either square or rectangular wires talking about the diameter of the wires if there is a decrease in diameter of the orthodontic wire the stiffness threshold point is consequently reduced thus it becomes too soft for orthodontic use whereas If there is an increase in diameter it leads to an increase in stiffness threshold point of the orthodontic wire thus the wire becomes too stiff for orthodontic use therefore the ideal wire should be in between these two extremes 
Now let's take a look at these individual wires one by one. So coming back to gold and gold alloys. It is the earliest metal to be used in the manufacture of orthodontic arch wires. The alloy composition of the wires made of noble metals would be gold 55 to 65 percent, platinum 5 to 10 percent, palladium 5 to 10 percent, copper 11 to 18 percent and nickel 1 to 2 percent. So these composition were similar to that of type 4 gold casting alloys. Now before we discuss the advantages and disadvantages of gold and gold alloys, let's take a look at some of the mechanical properties of uh, dental materials in relation to the stress and strain graph. The orange color region is the resilience or springiness that is the amount of energy absorbed when stressed to proportional limit. Its significance is if the elastic area is large that means the wire has larger or higher resilience and you need a good resilience in orthotic arch wire so that the working range is improved. So till the region of proportional limit is the reversible elastic strain that is the amount to which when the wire is elongated on removing the force it will revert to its original size. So if the wire is extended beyond the proportional limit it enters the phase of irreversible plastic strain and when the force is removed or when the stress is removed it won't be able to regain this plastic strain that will persist in the wire. Now another important feature of arch wires is the ductility so this dotted white line represents the ductility of the wire which extends beyond the proportional limit to the fracture point. So ductility is the percent elongation, the ability to sustain a large permanent deformation under tensile load before it fractures. If the wire has zero ductility that means it is not burnishable, it is not workable. You need a good ductility which will lead to good formability of the orthodontic arch wire therefore it can take more number of bends. The elastic limit corresponds to the spring back which is the maximum stress the material can withstand before it becomes plastically deformed. If the wire has a high spring back then it has an increased range of action. So let's come back to gold and gold alloys. The advantages are excellent formability and high resilience. So what that does is if that gold has good formability and resilience that means it provides the ease in bending the wires into loops, coils and stops without fracturing. Gold also has high ductility so it is able to undergo cold working without fracture. As previously mentioned, it has excellent biocompatibility and environment stability. So it is resistant to corrosion and it has increased tissue tolerance. These properties are desired as these wires will be placed in the patient's mouth. The disadvantages being that it has low spring back and it is expensive. Moving on to stainless steel wires. Stainless steel is the most popular wire alloy used in orthodontics because of an outstanding combination of mechanical properties, corrosion resistance and cost. These alloys are known as 18-8 stainless steels, so designated because of the percentages of chromium and nickel in the alloy, that is chromium about 18% and nickel 8%. The wires used in orthodontics are generally American Iron and Steel Institute AISI types 302 and 304 austenitic stainless steels. The chromium in the stainless steel forms a thin adherent passivating oxide layer that provides corrosion resistance by blocking the diffusion of oxygen to the underlying bulk of the alloy. The chromium, carbon and nickel atoms are incorporated into the solid solution formed by the iron atoms. The nickel atoms are not strongly bonded to form some intermetallic compounds so nickel alloy really gets released from the alloy surface which may interfere with the biocompatibility of the alloy. Heat treatment of the wire causes decrease in residual stress and increase in resilience. Heat treatment of stainless steel wires at above 650 degrees centigrade must be avoided because rapid crystallization of the rod structure takes place with deleterious effects on the wire properties. So let's go back to the stress strain graph again. Let's talk about Young's modulus or modulus of elasticity. 
So the stress and strain graph is a straight line till the proportional limit and this region follows Hooke's law that is stress is directly proportional to strain. This corresponds to Young's modulus and modulus of elasticity that is the slope of the elastic region where the stress is proportional to strain and it is a constant value. So if the strain is lower, modulus of elasticity is lower. So if the values are below this graph, then that's a flexible material. If the values are higher, so it's a rigid material. Low stiffness means lower forces are applied constantly over time. Yield strength or proof stress is the stress required to produce a given amount of plastic strain and is measured in percentages. So either a 0.1% or 0.2% offset and similarly. This brings us to the advantages and disadvantages of stainless steel. So the advantages are it has adequate strength to be effectively and efficiently used as orthodontic arch wires. It has a good resilience, good formability, it is biocompatible, it is cost effective, it can be soldered and welded, it is resistant to corrosion. So soldering and weldering that means joinability is possible with stainless steel, it can be fused together. And the disadvantage is somewhat similar to gold that it has low spring back when compared to the newer materials that are the titanium based alloys. Till date, it is one of the most commonly used orthodontic materials. Yield strength to modulus of elasticity ratio. It indicates a lower spring back of stainless steel as compared to newer titanium based alloys. So this suggests that stainless steel produces higher forces that dissipate over shorter periods, therefore it requires frequent activations. That basically means that stainless steel is not as flexible as titanium based alloy. So stainless steel has to be periodically activated. Coming to cobalt chromium nickel alloys or termed as cobalt chromium alloys. The alloy was originally developed by the Elgin Watch Company of America as a material for the mainspring of watches and was advertised as the heart that never breaks. They are also known as LG Loy, which was developed during 1950s by the LG Loy Corporation. Its composition is cobalt about 40 to 45 percent and chromium 15 to 22 percent. Nickel is added for strength and ductility. Iron, molybdenum, tungsten and titanium can also be added to form stable carbides and enhance its hardening features. The Elgiloy wires are available in four tempers depending on their resilience and are color coded by the manufacturer. So that's soft blue, ductile yellow, semi resilient green, and resilient red. So all the four alloy tempers have the same composition, but difference in the mechanical properties is due to the variation in the wire processing. So the four alloy tempers are blue, which is the softest. And it can be manipulated into different shapes. It can be heat treated, it can be welded, it can be used for edgewise arches, lingual arches, retainers, and removal appliances, and is the most commonly used one in orthodontics. Green can be shaped easily with fingers, it is semi resilient. Then red is resilient, it cannot be heat treated, it is used when no adjustments will be required. And yellow is harder than blue, it can be spot welded, it can accept only slight adjustments and is used for greater spring back qualities. Another clinical use of algaloid blue is fabrication of fixed lingual quad helix appliance which produces low maxillary expansion in the treatment of maxillary constriction. So the advantages of cobalt chromium alloys is it has adequate spring back and formability because they have a high modulus of elasticity which suggests that they deliver twice the force of beta titanium and four times the force of nickel titanium arch wires. They are biocompatible. They accept maximum number of bends because they have adequate spring backs. In the other arch wires we saw that gold and stainless steel both have a poor spring back. So this is one of the major advantages of cobalt chromium that it has adequate spring back and it can deliver twice the force of beta titanium and four times the force of nickel titanium arch wires owing to its high modulus of elasticity. It can accept maximum number of bends, it is economical, it can be heat treated. 
but then cobalt chromium disappeared by the end of 20th century basically because it needs additional cost there it needs an extra setup for the heat treatment to obtain optimal properties so that added to the extra cost and it kind of became obsolete we saw that blue variant is the most commonly used one it is softer so the wire is supplied in softer form then shaping of the wire is done it is heat treated at about 500 degrees centigrade so that it gets hardened so it's it at that stage it's its hardness is equivalent to stainless steel so you need basically an extra equipment for all these heating purposes which discouraged its use so this was about gold stainless steel and cobalt chromium second part of this presentation we shall discuss about the the newer advancements in orthotic arch wires which are the most famous nickel titanium and beta titanium alloys and also look at optiflex arch wires and multi-stranded arch wires in the next video so stay tuned for the second part of this presentation i hope you have liked this presentation please do like share comment and subscribe to the channel thank you